so now that we've established the terms that are useful when studying abnormal um, chromosomal numbers, we can continue our discussion on abnormalities in chromosome number by entitling our next flowchart um, ACN, which is just short for abnorm abnormalities in chromosome numbers, Roman numeral 2. And this is going to be an increase in specificity. We're now going to actually be looking at real-life human genetic disorders associated with chromosomal number abnormalities. First and foremost, we're going to be looking at one that many people are already aware of and understand um, exists is something known as Down syndrome. Okay, so now what's going to really sort of click is why it happens and why it's called, you should be able to already understand why it's called trisomy. That's something we've established, a term that we established, 21. So what does trisomy mean? Trisomy, again, remember, means that you have 2n plus 1. You have a plus 1 at some chromosomal number, okay? At some chromosome, at a particular chromosome, you have three copies. And what chromosome are we talking about here? There's an extra copy at chromosome 21. Now, why does Down syndrome happen? Well, Down syndrome is actually this trisomic event is due to something we established, a term that we established. It's actually due to non-disjunction. Okay, so we'll say non-disjunction at chromosome 21, and specifically this is within the mother. Okay, it's non-disjunction in the mom's gamete, and this disjunction possibility, this non-disjunction possibility, actually increases with age. So the probability actually increases with age. This is why you often hear people say that um, people who are potential or are thinking of having children at an older age, specifically the female in this situation, they should be very cautious of the possibility of a Down syndrome uh, offspring of a trisomic individual simply because the probability of non-disjunction happening within them actually increases with age. A lot of very relevant research associated to this small part of your general biology knowledge. But Nonetheless, we'll continue our discussion. Now, Down syndrome will result in some very interesting and very noticeable phenotypes, mainly structural abnormalities. It's very easy for us to see Down syndrome, let's say, um, because of the fact that there are structural abnormalities associated with it. Mainly these abnormalities are highly noticeable within the face and oftentimes also within the hands and several other places, but mainly the face and hands um, of a Down syndrome trisomic 21 individual individual are clear and distinct. They also, people who have trisomy 21, have a relatively short stature. This is noticeable to us and thus we should understand its origin. Um, in addition to this, Down syndrome individuals, um, this is also quite noticeable to us based off of research, have slowed slash delayed um, physical and mental development. So this is very difficult um, disease and disorder because of the physical, physical aspect of it and because of the mental aspect of it because it occurs with development. So if you have poor development, slow or delayed development, this is a sort of a um, crutch that you have to face the whole, your whole entire life because of the step back, the slowed and delayed development that you have, both physically and mentally. And lastly, Down syndrome individuals are actually prone to a whole plethora of other problems, specifically prone to, uh, we will just generally call them heart, liver, and uh, respiratory problems, okay? This is a very difficult situation, very, very bad uh, chromosomal number abnormality, specifically trisomy 21, otherwise known as Down syndrome. Now, trisomy 21 is not the only trisomy. There are actually other trisomies, but they are very, very um, less common. So we'll say other trisomy, and the other ones are specifically trisomy 13, and also trisomy 18, both of which have common names named after the people who discovered them. Trisomy 13 is also known as Patau syndrome. So we'll say Patau, P-A-T-A-U syndrome, S-Y-N for syndrome. And trisomy 18 is otherwise known as Edwards syndrome. 
okay? Edwards SYN for syndrome. Um, the key thing behind these two is that unlike Down syndrome and trisomy 21, these individuals don't survive long. Okay, they survive, they have a very, very short lifespan. If they even are born, their survival rate is about a couple of weeks. So Patel syndrome and Edwards syndrome individuals at infancy usually die. Now, we'll continue uh, and finish our discussion on abnormal normalities in chromosome number by looking at something very, very common and very important, really, in um, our own study of understanding sex for uh, a genetic standpoint, let's say. There are also abnormalities in sex chromosomes, and this specifically known as sex chromosome aneuploidy. And if we remember our term, remember the reason why we learned our terms is to apply them. Look, we applied trisomy right over here a couple of times. We also applied non-disjunction. We know that these are all deviations from our normal disomy individual. In sex chromosome aneuploidy, aneuploidy means an abnormal abnormality in chromosome number, we have the following situations. We can have something known as Turner syndrome. Okay, So Turner syndrome is a sex chromosome abnormality. So let's remember the normal. The normal is a female is XX and a male is XY. And we know that one of these will be inactivated and turn into a bar body. In the XX situation and in the XY situation, we just have a hemizygous male. In Turner syndrome, um, this is going to be in which an individual has only one X chromosome. And their um, sex chromosome, let's say genotype, will be referred to as X with an O. Okay, so it will be only one X chromosome. These people are phenotypically female. They show up and are visibly female to us. They are usually categorized with a short um, stature and they are short also with a thick, what we call webbed neck. I would definitely look at an image in your textbook of this just to see the complexity of this uh, very devastating disease. Um, these people are actually pretty are 100% sterile. And sterile simply means that they cannot produce offspring because these individuals, even though they are female and they don't have too bad of a lifespan and lifestyle, they actually have no proper ovary development. And if you have no proper, proper ovary development, you are sterile and cannot pass on your genes. Um, these individuals actually don't have any bar bodies as well. Why would they not have any bar bodies? Well, they don't have another X2 inactivate, thus they don't have any bar bodies in a Turner syndrome individual. Another sex chromosome aneuploidy to understand is um, something called Klinefelter's. So Klinefelter's syndrome. So this is another one to understand. This is at the sex chromosome, so let's go back. What was the abnormality with Turner syndrome? What the abnormality was, you only have one X. Usually you have two, you only have one. Klinefelter syndrome is in when the individual is the following genotype. XXY male. They are usually phenotypically male. They have Klinefelter syndrome when they have XX, but they also have a Y within their sex chromosomes. These people, these individuals are usually tall males. They are usually learning disabled. Okay, We don't need to get into the mechanisms of it, but those mechanisms are in and of themselves fascinating. These individuals are sterile as well, just like the Turner syndrome counterparts. And their sterility is because of not no ovary development because they are male right now. They actually have no testes development. Their development in the testes is or and does not work out, but they have sterile. They are sterile. And interestingly enough, these are males that have bar bodies, which is really, really weird, really, really kind of interesting to think of, that these individuals, though they are male, represent themselves with bar bodies because of X inactivation that happens within them. So be aware that X inactivation can indeed happen within males just because of the possibility of Klinefelter syndrome giving an XXY male phenotype. And then finally, we'll conclude our discussion on sex chromosome aneuploidy by looking at one final option, which would be X, um, X, oh, or not X, 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 Y, why male individuals. They don't know the specific name to this. You don't think you are responsible for that. But these individuals, interestingly enough, um, are actually fertile. And you don't really even call this a syndrome simply because um, these people are relatively phenotypically normal. 
Not only are they phenotypically normal, but they are actually fertile, like I said, meaning that they can have offspring. So this is not considered a syndrome, at least in my knowledge, simply because there aren't that many crazy side effects of this. And interestingly enough, they actually don't even transmit that extra Y. It's just there. You would not be able to tell if a male is XYY just by looking at them, you would have to do a genetic analysis. So they actually don't transmit the extra Y, and that's the last thing we'll talk about. So these are interesting individuals because you can't tell. You really can't tell if an individual is XY or XYY. So that concludes our discussion on abnormalities in the chromosome number. We'll continue our discussion on chromosomes by looking at chromosomal structure alterations in the next video.